In those years, it was easier to win the Soviet championship than a game against Iron Tigran. Gary Kasparov Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a mega exciting game played between two world chess champions. On the white side is the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal and the 9th world chess champion Tigran Petrosian is playing with the black pieces. This is a game played in 1977 at URS Championship. By the way, Kasparov's quote refers to Petrosian's best days. Already in 1977, the peak of his playing strength was far behind, but still, even at that time, uh, Petrosian's Python strategy rarely betrayed him. So we have a clash of two world champions with diametrically opposed playing styles, and now without further ado, let's get started with it. Tal opened up with e4, to which Petrosian answered with e6. French defense is on the board. Uh, we will first go quickly through the main game, and then I will turn on Stockfish and we will analyze together. We know our variation is on the board. b6, queen g4, and bishop f8. This queen g4 jump is effective when black has already traded off the bishop on c3, and with this move white is exploiting the absence of the dark squared bishop. But in this case, as black bishop is still alive, is moving it back, is protecting the pawn, and thus at the same time, black is like emphasizing the fact that white queen on g4 is misplaced and is not doing much. Knight f3, queen d7, a4. Already bishop a6 can be met with knight b5, that's why we see knight c6, bishop d2. An alternative is moving back the knight on d1 and then c3, strengthening the center. This looks to be an interesting alternative. Knight g7, bishop e2, knight f5, white castled kingside, h5, queen f4, g6, both strengthening the knight and preparing bishop h6. Bishop b5 by Tal, bishop h6, knight g5, and knight takes d4. So we have a pawn sacrifice and the logical continuation of it, rook a d1, a very hard move to find, I think. It turns out that this rook is going to be useful on the d file. Uh, now, if, for example, knight f5, then knight c4 can follow. If d takes e4, then queen takes e4, and if bishop b7, then bishop f4, and then bishop takes c6. Uh, after rook a d1, we see king f8, which is a dubious move by Petrosian. It was better either to play a6 or bishop b7. Instead, Petrosian decided to castle by hand, also moved away his king from the vulnerable e8 square. It was exposed to knight f6 jumps. But this is not good, and now let's see what's the problem with it. Here comes bishop takes c6. Knight takes c6 is forced because black queen can't leave the 7th rank. And there comes a very beautiful move, knight c e4. White knight is hurrying to occupy this f6 square. It's obvious that black can't accept the peace sacrifice because of this bishop b4 check. White will win black queen. And if I move like bishop b7, the knight f6 can be very unpleasant. Yes, you should not allow this knight to occupy that square. And then if uh, queen e7, this is just a very nice line. Let me show you. Knight g h7 can follow. And then queen takes h6. Yeah, a very nice line. And white is announcing a checkmate. Uh, that's why in the game we see bishop takes g5 by Petrosian, which is a very accurate defense. At least he is removing one of the knights. Knight takes g5. Still white is keeping an eye on f7. Bishop a6. Attacking white's rook. Rook e1. King g8. b4. White wants to neutralize Black's light squared bishop, which feels very well on f1, a6 diagonal. b5 fork is the threat, that's why black played bishop c4. Uh, by the way, at this point, if b5, then c4 can be very unpleasant. If he takes c4, then bishop e3, and then knight e4. And this can be catastrophic for black. That's why in the game we see bishop c4, black is neutralizing the threat, and at the same time, is trying to keep the bishop active, but soon we will see that once this bishop is entering white's territory, it's becoming a target. Here comes b5. White is cornering black knight. 
and at the same time is freeing the b4 square for the bishop and now this dark squared bishop will have a demoralizing effect on black's army queen goes back on e8 and it was in here that tal made an absolutely staggering move which totally took me by surprise can you find his next move ready now look, as there is a hole on f6, that enables white to make one of the most fantastic moves ever, and in here, the magician from Riga played rook e4. How do you like this move, guys? Did you manage to find it, by the way? P please let us know in the comment section. Uh, also, the vulnerability of this bishop and the queen are playing a key role in this combination as well. Right now, white wants to win the light squared bishop. Uh, Petrosan played bishop takes b5, but let's take a look what if, for example, bishop a2. Then this time white can play rook e3, and then rook c3, rook a1, trapping the bishop. Uh, in the game, after rook e4, we see bishop takes b5 by Petrosian. And only after a takes b5, he won white rook. In this case, already you can't play knight takes e4 because of this queen takes b5. Black queen is managing to get activated. That's why after d takes e4, we see c4 by Tal. Uh, by the way, forgot to mention that at this point, accepting the rook sacrifice can lead to the loss of queen. After knight e4, white then will play knight f6 and black is losing the queen. It's trapped. So in the game, bishop takes b5 was played, a takes b5, d takes e4 and c4. He is first protecting the pawn on b5 in order to keep black queen imprisoned and only then will win this pawn on e4. Meanwhile with c5 black is blocking the a3 f8 diagonal securing some safe squares for his queen. Capturing m passant will allow black to activate his pieces that's why we see knight takes e4 with the threat of knight f6 check queen goes on f8 but anyways knight f6 check followed king g7 bishop c3 an alternative is bishop e1 in some cases that can be very useful. Having blocked the first rank can be very useful in order not to allow in future to meet rook d7 with rook d8. At this point we first see queen f3, meanwhile Petrosian is activating his knight if somehow is trying to find a better square for it and meanwhile white rook is penetrating the 7th rank. Rook d8. Uh, well if... Uh, Knight takes c4, then knight e4 can be very unpleasant, followed by knight g5. That's why we see rook d8 and rook takes a7. Knight takes c4, h4. Tal is first opening up a loop for his king. Rook a8 and knight takes h5. Well, so far so good. Tal was playing an excellent chess and was totally dominating the position, but this is a serious mistake and is allowing black to fight back. At this point it was very important to play rook b7 after which black is finding himself in Tsukhtsavang. Now if uh, rook b8 then knight d7 is winning and if a move like rook d8 then this time knight d4 can be very unpleasant for black. Knight g5 can be a threat intensifying the pressure on f7, in some cases knight d6 can be played and if a move like queen e8 in order to meet knight g5 with rook d7 then this time knight d6, yes, and white is winning. If here then suddenly the dark squared bishop is jumping into the game and white is winning. At this point if a move like e5 then rook e7, yeah, and again white is winning. Uh, instead, Tal missed this golden opportunity and he played knight takes h5 check. This may seem to be a tempting move, but in reality this doesn't give white anything and after this move, actually, it's a draw. The single queen is not enough to finish up black king and all white can do is to give a perpetual check. Tal kept on harassing black king, gave more checks and finally... They agreed to draw. Another check, yes, and on move 41 the players agreed to draw. What I want to do right now is to go through the game when having Stockfish on and uh, want you to show how Tal was actually dominating throughout the whole game. 
So after uh, rook d1, king f8 was played, which gave white a huge advantage. a6, bishop b7 were the moves. And uh, just pay attention, please, uh, how is Tal playing. He's just playing with the engine's accuracy. Knight c e4, bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, uh, and then rook e1, king g8, b4. Yeah, like a machine, you know. Bishop c4, first b5. Then the bishop is occupying this essential diagonal. Again, engine's first choice. And then rook e4. At this point, uh, the engine is also suggesting rook d4. But in some cases, uh, somehow rook e4 can also pop up as a first move. So uh, rook e4 was made by Tal. Bishop takes b5. An alternative was bishop h2. But again, that won't give black much. He takes e4. Peterson is also defending well. c4, again the first move. Okay, with c5, Petrosian neutralized the dark squared bishop. Check. King g7. Bishop c3. So it looks like that uh, bishop c3 is not that bad, right? Bishop e1 is among Angie's best choices. But in the game, we see bishop c3 by Tal. Knight b7, queen f3, again the first move, knight a5, and the rook is penetrating the 7th rank. What an accurate game, guys. Rook d8, rook takes a7. Interestingly, at this point, knight takes h5 works. And the reason for that is that black rook is on d8. You can't play here because of queen f6 and then rook d8. And if here, then queen f6 check. If here, then rook f7, and if here, then rook takes d8. So that's surprising that Tal missed knight takes h5. Maybe he was already in a time trouble, who knows? How could Tal miss this knight takes h5, guys? Rook takes a7, knight takes c4, h4, rook a8. Yeah, and only in here Tal played knight h5 which is allowing black to equalize and already that's a draw rook b7 and black is finding himself in Tsuktsavank you know or you can even play rook d7 and if uh, rook d8 then this time you can play knight takes h5 this time it's winning but uh, with rook b7 you are putting your opponent in Tsuktsavank and you are winning easily well this is it dear chess lovers hope that you enjoyed this exciting match we all saw that during the whole game Mikhail Tal was dominating. He was always making the most accurate moves, found some brilliant moves one after another. I liked that knight e4 followed by rook e4, uh, but then in the end something strange happened. He first missed knight h5 sacrifice and then failed to find another brilliant resource, could put his opponent in Tsuktsavank, made knight h5 sacrifice only when it was already too late. His single queen alone failed to do much. He could only give a perpetual check, thus the game ended in a draw. On the other hand, Petrosian also played well. He defended firmly and managed to save that hopeless position. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.